Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and sorry I haven't made a video in a while. Uh, I work in the retail food service industry, for those of you who don't know, I have got a lot of new subscribers recently. And the world's kind of ended when it comes to retail food workers, so I have been working my... Oh my god, I just, I can't even describe it. It's been, it's been rough though these last couple of days. Uh with all the all the stuff that's been going on. I shouldn't say the last couple of days, the last couple of weeks it's been it's been pretty bad. So I appreciate you guys for bearing with me and, and not making too many videos. But I have a cool thing here to show you uh that I recently got. Uh this is a uh World War One Orlux trench torch. And uh there is the uh little plate on it. Uh it says the Orlux uh by J. H. Stewart uh Limited, uh four hundred and six strand London and it's basically a flashlight. Uh, it was a, actually a pretty popular model of flight, uh, flashlight for both uh, the British and Commonwealth soldiers during World War I. And um, I shouldn't say Commonwealth, Dominion soldiers during World War I. The Commonwealth really didn't exist yet. Um, but we'll, we'll take a look at this kind of unique piece of history. There's not too many of these out there, despite the fact the number uh, that was made of these. There's... Uh, not too many of them left in the world, unfortunately. They they disappear, and a lot of them are missing parts, so they don't work, and they haven't made parts for these for decades. Um, so what we have here is the case. It's basically, a, it's called a Sam Brown case, after the kind of belt and equipment set. Um, it's just a belt pouch. Uh, I have seen some of these cases that have been modified to take a shoulder strap as well. Um, it's just a leather carrying pouch to help protect the flashlight, which would have been very expensive back in the day. Well, relatively expensive. Um, the unique stuff's kind of here at the top, so it's just a normal keyhole stud type fastener for keeping it shut, but up here is a block of wood, and on this little block of wood, um, if I can kind of show you in there, there's these little kind of metal tabs that sw swing, they're pinned in place, and there's one on either side there, so you can see that one better on this side because of the lighting, um, but up there is where you would store a spare bulb for this flashlight, and you might be noticing this little wood peg, alright, this little wood peg, it goes clear through the top, as you can see me kind of push it out there. Um, and that would have been normal uh, to use the uh, Morse function on this flashlight. There would have been a big kind of flat paddle here. Now, some of them you'll find with that. Some of them you'll find without that. Um, it kind of depends. Uh, a lot of these uh, would have been just fine and kept the way they were because officers would have purchased these. But uh, the enlisted personnel that purchased these, I've read something, and I don't know if it's true or not, so... Um, a lot of the Morse function was taken off of the ones uh, that enlisted personnel bought under officer's orders because they didn't want them to have the ability to signal with this flashlight. So uh, that plunger would have been removed so they couldn't um, use it for sending messages. So, um, But other than that, it's basically just a normal flashlight. You would have had a button you could push over here um, had you had it in the uh, thing in the pouch and uh, if you put it in the pouch here um, a cool function is is if you have the cover on you were supposed to be able to not take the flashlight out of the pouch and you could kind of slide the cover back like this and you could push down that morse plunger and just the very bottom of this lens would be visible directly to the front so you could signal without having to have the like full thing of the flashlight uh, on the full power um, it also had a permanent on function as well, so, and how you would do that is you would push this plunger down and you would turn it, and that would make the flashlight stay on. Um, this thing ran off of a 4.8 volt kind of three cell battery. Uh, you can get these to work uh, with those four and a half volt kind of three cell camp batteries if you modify the batteries a little bit, because they normally have kind of one big connector on top, the uh, four and a half volt camp batteries that you could still get uh, but this has two separate connectors so you kind of have to get some copper studs or something uh, to get the flashlight to work um, other than that it's basically just hollow so these two little tabs hold the bottom on so there's kind of what it looks like on the inside you can maybe kind of see the two tabs down in there on either side there there's one there and one there and other than that it's basically just a hook up there's a little bracket there in the center held in place of screws that holds the uh the kind of bulb thing in place um and then there's this uh this came in it when i bought it it's a kind of a piece of paper i'm guessing used to keep the bottom from rattling and stuff and this is what it says it says um i don't know if 
any of you know what this company is, but it's kind of like the bottom half of a pouch and it's made out of wax paper. So if any of you know anything more about this company, uh, that'd be kind of cool to learn if you know anything in the comments. So I'm sure some of my uh, UK subscribers will be able to help me out with that or, or maybe not, but I'd, I'd very much like to know uh, where that little bit of paper came from. So, um, but that's all it is. is most of this uh, torch is just battery compartment. And then up here, uh, the most kind of identifying part of this flashlight, other than the uh, plate on top, is this kind of big lens. And it's called a bullseye lens. And what that means is when the flashlight is on, it has a very focused beam. Uh, and it's really only visible from straight on, uh, which is something you want in the torch, uh, in the trenches of World War I. Because if you look at it from the side, or even kind of an angle like this, it's actually very hard to see the light. Um, you could really only see it straight on, which made this a very good signaling flashlight. Um, so we can unscrew the lens here, and uh, you could we could take a closer look at that. It's just a very thick piece of glass. Uh, it's like a half dome, basically. And uh, really neat piece of kind of history here that you don't see. A lot of these were kind of made during early uh, World War I, because towards the end of World War I, you would see uh, uh, the company, uh, the J.H. Stewart Company, would switch to making a lot of compasses and stuff for the military. Now, the bulb is, as you can see it in there, is this tiny little pumpkin-shaped bulb. I often hear it referred to as a gourd-type bulb. And uh, they're very fragile. They haven't made them since the 40s, unfortunately. So, But on, uh, from everything I've read on these, the bulbs are often actually still working uh, all these years later, sometimes up to a century later. These are still working, the original bulbs in these. And uh, they just need the batteries in order to work. So, uh, Which is a pretty neat piece of history. So I hope that I can uh, get this working. And if I can get it working, I'd very much like to get it on video again for you guys. Um, but that's kind of it. They, these were used through World War One, and uh, the interwar period as personal flashlights, and civilians bought them as well. And then into World War Two, actually, these would kind of continue to serve with some people um, who preferred them. They're very easy to fit in a pocket. Um, this flashlight might be recognizable to some of you because it is actually the flashlight that is given to the two uh, message runners in the new movie 1917. Um, so if you're wondering what that is, it's actually this model of trench torch here so pretty neat piece of history to have I'm really glad to have one I got this one for dirt cheap because it was kind of labeled wrong at, a, at an auction um, so I'm very very glad to have it and I'm hoping I can get it to work and maybe I'll be able to even find a plunger for it here and get that to work um, if any of you guys have one that does work or have one of these that's broken or anything and are willing to send it to me I'd very much uh, like to work out a deal with you I'd, I'd happily pay you for one and hopefully uh, get a complete one someday. That would go good with a lot of my World War One sets. It'd be a very cool piece to have, especially one that's working. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. And uh, thank you to all my new subscribers. It means a lot to me that you guys uh, are willing to subscribe, especially in these kind of uh, harder times. I'm going to try to provide some entertainment to you, even though I'm super busy. I know a lot of you have time off now uh, across the, the globe here because of this whole... COVID-19 uh, thing going on, so uh, I'll do my best to kind of crank out some videos for you. Uh, means the world to me uh, to get your guys' likes and subscribes, and for those of you that do chose to uh, contribute to the channel, I have two ways to do that, uh, via Patreon and a direct PayPal link. Uh, PayPal, I get 100% of those funds if you feel like I deserve a contribution. Uh, I don't get many, so when you guys do, it, it means the world to me, and... Um, that's in the about page of my channel if, if you care. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope uh, your donations and stuff go to allow me to bring you cool stuff like this. And uh, m recent contributions, like ones that come after this video, will probably go to getting this thing to work if I can, at least doing everything in my power to get this thing to work. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.